Hi guys, Sandy here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something that we get asked a lot, and that is the rules around the net. When you're allowed to reach over and hit the ball, when you can't reach over, the rules around touching the net and when it's acceptable to do so, and also the rules around the fence. And at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about a rule that probably you weren't aware of, but something you should know if you're playing any serious competitions. Before we start, let me know in the comments down below if this is something that's happened in your games. I'm sure it has. So many players have had this experience in a tournament where someone has touched the net or they've touched the other side of the court and they don't really kind of understand the rules. So that's exactly what this video is. But let me know down in the comments if this is something that happened to you and also what happened in that situation, how did you resolve it and things like that. So we'll begin with probably the most basic of those is when you can and can't reach over the net, yeah? So you are allowed to reach over the net as long as you don't touch the net when the ball has already bounced on your side. So this might be, for example, if they hit a drop shot with a lot of spin that bounces here and it's gonna go back over this side, you're allowed to reach over and to hit that ball. The other time that you often see this is if someone has hit a hard smash and it's bounced off that glass and it's coming back over to this side, then you can run over and you can reach over the net and contact the ball across the line of the net to either finish the point or to try and put that ball away. Yeah, so those are the times that you are allowed to reach over the net. The times you are not allowed to reach over the net is when the ball is coming straight from the other side. Yeah, so if the ball hasn't already bounced on your court, you're not allowed to reach over and contact the ball like this and this is something that often is contentious in tournaments because there might be a soft ball here and players are coming up and they're contacting the ball over the other side of the net and this is not allowed yet yeah? you are allowed to contact on your side and the swing path of your racket go over the net but the contact must be on your side in that situation when it comes to touching the net if you touch the net during the rally at any point, then it automatically becomes your opponent's point. Yep. So for example, if you were to hit a smash and you touch the net with your racket, or if you come forward and you touch it with your foot at the bottom of the net, both of those count as your opponent's point if it's during the rally. The same applies if you touch the net post. Often you see players when they're running out, they put their hand on the net post or they touch it with their racket or their leg. Immediately you would lose the point as soon as you've touched any part of the net. This can be really good practice to do this, trying to finish the ball on the other side of the court without touching the net. And you can do this with your own glass, yeah? So you smash the ball down. Yeah, and just reach over and practice trying to finish the ball without touching your own net. When it comes to touching parts of the fence, if you can run out in your game, if you're allowed to in your match, you can put your hand on your own fence like this. That's absolutely fine to hit the ball. You are not allowed to touch the fence of your opponents. Yeah, that would again be considered like the net an immediate loss of point. The same applies if you jump and you touch the part of the fence on their side of the court, that would automatically mean that you lose the point. You can, however, move outside the court like this and play a ball inside your opponent's court. As long as your feet are outside your opponent's court, you don't touch the net and you don't touch the fence. Yeah, so you are allowed to hit a ball like that. But if you're touching any part of your opponent's fence or the net, then you automatically lose the point. Now for the rule that you probably aren't aware of is that if you finish the point on your shot and the point is already finished and then you touch the net, that would be considered your point still, yeah. So for example, if you come forward here and you hit a smash and it bounces and as soon as it crosses the fence of the four meters, so as soon as it goes across there, then you've already won the point. So if that happens and then after you lose balance and you touch the net, that would still be considered your point. If you're playing in a court where you're not allowed to run outside, yeah, so you know sometimes when you don't have enough space or it's part of the rules of the tournament and you were to come forward and hit your smash so it bounces and it clears again the line of the fence. As soon as it clears that line of the fence, then you touch the net, that would again be your point because the point is considered finished. It is the same if the ball bounces twice on the other opponent's side of the court. Yeah, so as an example, if you're running in and you finish that point like that and you know when you're losing balance, if afterwards you touch the ground with your racket or you touch the net, but the ball has already bounced twice or it already has cleared those parts of the fence, 
then that is still your point, even though it's in the same movement. So the big question is, whose call is it? Yeah, so at the World Paddle Tour level, you have a referee and you have, you know, camera reviews, and that means that you can see if the net has been touched or, you know, the post or, or whatever it might be. But below that level, the matches are meant to be self-refereed. So in paddle, often you're relying on good sportsmanship, and particularly if it's a friendly or, or recreational game, um, you know, you're relying on people to kind of own up if they've touched the net or, or they've you know, reached over and touched their racket on the ground or something like that. Now, often it's quite difficult, particularly if you just touch with your foot and you're in the middle of the point, sometimes you don't realize. So the opponents can call that once they've seen it. And this is usually where you kind of go on, you know, whatever the players agree. Yeah? So if, if you really don't agree that you touched it and the opponents are saying you definitely did, then the kind of best or, or, or most sportsmanlike thing to do is to play a let on that situation um, because it's very difficult to know. So if you're in doubt, play a let. If you don't have a referee, if you have a referee, then obviously you can rely on their call. Yeah. So, but really it's the decision of the players. You don't really want to get into a situation where you're relying on a group of friends to tell you what's happened outside the court because that's never going to be uh, objective or unbiased. Yeah. So really it should be the players that are making that final decision. So obviously, as we mentioned, you're not allowed to reach over the net and hit your smash down like that. So on this side, I'm gonna put a video about how is a good way to smash down and out effectively and to use that as a weapon in your game.